Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, I want to show you how I put together this circuit playground holder for this Gothic Lantern. So this Gothic Lantern is actually designed by Shira on Thingiverse. And this is a really cool looking, uh, basically a lantern. It's a, in three pieces. There is the sort of lantern parts, the kind of lamp shade, and a, a little topper here. And this is really cool, and Shira put this together and put it up on Thingiverse for everybody to download. Um, the cool thing is that you kind of pick your own lighting um, thing. So you can put your own tea lights, Christmas lights, for example, in this one. But what I thought would be really interesting is to actually use the Circuit Playground. So this is the classic Adafruit Circuit Playground. It's only 20 bucks, and it comes with a lot of things. Uh, the coolest things, of course, being 10 NeoPixels. So we got 10 NeoPixels going across the whole thing here in this very circular pattern. I think the Circuit Playground is a great project. Uh, it's a great product for this project. So putting this underneath um, the lampshade is definitely doable and pretty easy. So I wanted to show you guys how I put together the CAD model for it. So uh, real quick, here's what it looks like. I actually brought in a mesh, which is the STL file that Shira uploaded. And what I put together was basically this little um, holder thing. So let me hide the mesh and show you really what we're going to be making today. So this is the Circuit Playground um, board itself. And we have a, a basically like a little circular enclosure. And there are four of these holes here. And these actually are for mounting, uh, these are mounting holes for going into the actual mesh. So if I hide this guy here, you can see there are actually built in four mounting holes on the bottom of this here. So this is a flat surface printed, and this is kind of touching the bed, and this prints upwards vertically like that, which is pretty cool. So needed a way to get the circuit playground in here. The circuit playground itself is just a little bit bigger than the opening, but Look at that, it almost looks like it is designed for the circuit playground. So that's really cool. Uh, there's also a slide switch here so that we can actually turn on, turn the circuit playground on and off. And although I don't have the model here, um, there is enough clearance uh, for a battery. So we can put a 500 milliamp LiPo battery in here. And you can see there's quite a bit of distance from the bottom of the enclosure to the bottom of the circuit playground. So really, really cool. So that's where the battery is. It actually hides underneath the circuit playground. And there is a JST slide switch adapter that connects to the JST and to the slide switch so we can turn it on, on, on and off. So that's pretty much how it works. Uh, pretty straightforward. And what I'll do is remake this and kind of walk you guys through uh, how you guys can do uh, these sort of projects. Um, for yourselves. So the cool thing is you could make uh, an, a wide assortment of kind of holders for your circuit playground. Say you have something that needs to house the circuit playground, this could be a really interesting method on how to do it. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new document and save it to my folder, which I have done here. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to bring in the mesh to work off of, right? So over here under insert, there is an insert mesh, and this basically lets you bring in object files or STLs. So I'm gonna click on that, and it'll tell me right away to open it. So go ahead and grab your thing. This file is called Gothic Lantern Base. So that's the main base area. I'm gonna go ahead and open that, and we get a nice preview of it. And if we look at it from the top, you can see that it was designed with an orientation, so it is centered to the grid, which is awesome. This is going to help uh, tremendously because now we don't have to move anything. We can just kind of keep it here. It's also flat on the plane as well, so really nice job, Shira, on this one because I don't have to kind of reposition it or anything. It's really good in, in spot. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is bring in the circuit playground. So I have the Circuit Playground as a separate component because I've done quite a few projects with it. So I need to be able to insert that into many different things. I currently use the Circuit Playground Express board, but it has basically the same mounting holes and position of the NeoPixels, which is really what's important. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on it, insert into current design. And if you guys want to use this Circuit Playground 
uh, component. Uh, I have a link down in the description where you can download this uh, and import it into your Fusion or SolidWorks or whatever uh, thing you have because you can download whatever file format you want. Um, so here it is. Uh, I haven't placed it yet. And you'll notice that from a, from the top view, it's actually centered as well. So already it is in the exact position where we need it to, with the exception of kind of the z-axis. We kind of want to have it a little bit distance from here because if we look at the tallest component, the um, the JST connector just barely can fit in there, so it intersects with it. So we have to kind of have a little bit of distance. I'm going to think maybe 8 millimeters, and that's fine. Uh, with light diffusion, the more distance you have, the more diffusion you kind of get. Um, so that isn't a problem. All right, so now that we have most of our components in there, uh, you know what? For, for the next thing, we should get the slide switch in here as well. I wasn't going to include this into the project, but it, you know what? A slide switch is very important. I mean, if you can't, if you have to unscrew this to take it apart, uh, that that's a little bit um, counterintuitive. So I have the slide switch here also as a separate component. I'll go ahead and give you guys the link for that as well, so you guys can use this. This is the slide switch that I pretty much use on like 99.9% .9 of all my projects. This one, however, has a, a kind of a different distant uh, position. It's kind of not in the center. But we can reposition it however we want. So for now, I'm just going to kind of set it aside. And we'll reposition it later. All right, so that's pretty much uh, the components that we need. We got the lantern base. We have our circuit playground and our slide switch. Next thing we're going to do is start working on the enclosure for it. So what I'll do is I'm going to grab a offset plane and click on the bottom of the circuit playground. And this is going to allow me to work off a little bit of distance away from the circuit playground. So you can see I can manipulate it here and kind of give it some distance. So I'm going to give it a distance of about 5 millimeters because I do plan to put the battery in between the circuit playground board and the bottom of the enclosure. That's where the battery is because if we want the base to be kind of the same uh, width of the bottom of this lantern base, uh, we want to keep it relatively the same size. So I won't be able to have the battery kind of chilling on the side of the board. I need it to be underneath the board. And underneath the board, it's pretty flat. There's not much going on there, so I don't think there's anything that's going to poke it. If we take a look at the bottom here of the board, you'll see it's pretty flat, and there's no protruding uh, pointy things. So we don't have to worry about the battery getting punctured or anything. That's always a good thing to think about. All right, so I got 5 millimeter distance here for my offset plane. I'm going to hit OK. There's my offset plane looking all yellowish-orange. I'm going to click on it selected right now. I'm going to click on the new sketch button so I can start working on a sketch off of that. Fusion's going to throw me up here in the top here. I'm going to re reorient myself over here, maybe hide uh, this component here. Alright, so if we look at it from this distance, uh, from the front view, you can see where we are. The red line is one of our axes and we want to just to kind of give us an idea of where we are. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring in uh, some projected sketches. So I want to bring in some of these mounting holes. And for this project, um, we don't need to have every single hole. I think just four holes is fine. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard for the project um, feature tool. And I'm going to start projecting in some, some things here. So I'm going to bring in this, this one and maybe these two in the back here. So by projecting these holes in, I have a reference point um, for uh, creating standoffs to elevate this thing. All right, next thing I'm going to do, now that I have my four holes, is to offset them. And when I offset them, you can hold, you can hit the O button to bring up the, the it's kind of the, the hot key for it. And by default, Fusion will throw a 1 millimeter uh, offset. I'm going to put 1.5 millimeter offset. And that's because uh, I just want it to be a little bit thicker uh, when I'm 3D printing it. So I'm going to do this for all four uh, projected mounting holes here. So again, click on it. Or, and then type in your value, or you can project, uh, you can offset and then click on the thing. So either or works for you. I, I prematurely hit that OK, so I'm going to change it to 1.5. All right, so now we have our four offsetted circles that are projected. The next thing I'm going to do is create the overall uh, circle shape that will encompass the whole thing. So if we look at it from the bottom, you can see that the mounting holes for the base are out here. So my uh, my base needs to, my circuit playground holder needs to kind of encompass those holes. So I'm going to uh, bring up the circle tool up here. I can use the letter C for the hot key and then click in the center of the grid and then draw it out here. So the, again, it needs to encompass that. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with something like 76 millimeters is pretty good. I think that's gonna work okay. All right, and I'm gonna hit stop sketch, and that's pretty much our base. So now what I'll do is I will hide all the bodies real quick, hide the circuit playground, and then extrude this out, including the um, including this stuff. I accidentally did something here. I created a new sketch by accident. So let me open that up. All right, we got our first sketch. I basically want to extrude all this out, right? So I'm going to select all that stuff here with a marquee selection and make it one millimeter, actually 1.5 millimeters. And it's telling me that you, you're hiding the thing, so I need to bring back the bodies and hold that. The operation should be new body because I'm going to create a new body from it. Hit OK. So now I got my base, nothing nothing fancy yet, just got a circle. I'm going to bring back the circle playground and see what I got working with. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is bring up these standoffs. So Bringing back the sketch, I'm going to select the kind of donut shapes here uh, for each of these circles that we projected and offsetted. So I got those four. And now I'm going to hit E on my keyboard to extrude it. I want this to be a dynamic extrusion. So I'm going to go to the distance. I'm going to change that to object and then select the bottom of the circuit playground board. It doesn't show anything yet, and that's because I have to change the chain faces to extend faces. And that'll let me bring those out. So now I can hit OK, and if I ever move the circuit playground, uh, these guys will grow with it, the little standoffs. So how do we get the standoffs, or how do we get the circuit playground mounted to these standoffs? I'm actually using uh, two point, or actually M3 screws. So four M3 machine screws will be fastened from the top of the board and into the standoff. So that's actually how I'm mounting it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to work on is trying to bring this base, somehow mount it to this area here. So to do that, I'm actually going to create some new circles. Since I can't project anything from a mesh, I kind of have to create my own circles, which is easy. So let's do that. The next, okay, so I'll work off of this plane here or really, really this surface here because I'm going to be extruding it up. So I'm going to hit, so with this selected, right, I'm going to hit P on my keyboard. That's going to project the sketch. And I'm going to hide the circuit playground just so I can kind of get a better look at this. So basically what I can do now, I'm going to hit OK to complete the, the projectedness. I need to create a circle somewhere around here. So I'm going to kind of, as, the more you zoom in, the more finer the, gr the grid gets. So I'm going to try to find the center and draw it out. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than it needs to be, so like 5.4 is probably good. And now what I'll do is kind of move this around so that it is as closest to the center as possible. It won't be perfect, but it'll be kind of okay because we're making a bigger circle than it needs to be. You can see it's a little bit off-centered there, but as long as it can be a little bit bigger, we should be okay. So as we zoom out, you can see how um, you, you're going to have a hole that's just... A little bit bigger and wider than the hole in the in the thing, which is fine because we'll be able to fasten and tighten these uh, as we need to. So the next thing is I need to create uh, three more copies of this. So a real quick, easy way to do that is to use a circular pattern. So I can quickly bring that up with my my favorite thing ever. I hit S on my keyboard and that brings up this the sketch box thing. I'm gonna type in pattern and already I get all the pattern choices. I'm gonna pick this first circular pattern one. I need to pick my objects, which in this case is just one circle here, one circle profile. And then I need to click a center point, which will be in the center here. So by default, it's three for the quantity. I'm going to bring that up to four. And you can already see that the detail or the preview is pretty good. So I'm going to hit stop, or I'm going to hit OK, accept that. And now I have my four holes. And if we look in them, they're a little bit off here, a little bit off there they're still encompassing the whole, so it's actually okay. Again, it's not perfect, uh, but it is okay. I mean, you can move it a little bit, maybe that'll help. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. There's a little bit a little bit off there, so let me, let me go back here. Again, having it wider is, is definitely a, a, good, a good idea. So I think that's going to be the best I can do there. I'm going to hit Stop Sketch. And actually, I need to go back in the sketch because we do have the hole. Now we need the standoff. So just like we did for the circuit playground, 
I'm going to offset these circles by um, a certain amount, probably 1.5. Go ahead and hide this, the mesh so I can just focus on these four circles. Offset them, 1.5. Sometimes it's a good idea to just copy your value into your clipboard and then paste it. So just to kind of get a quicker way. Currently, I can't do multiple offsets. I would love to do that because it would save me, I don't know, three repetitive steps. So now that I got those, I'm going to hit Stop Sketch. I'm go ahead and select those donut shapes again, like we did for the Circuit Playground. So I'm going to select these guys, like that. And now I need to extrude them out. I can't do a dynamic uh, to object because, again, it's uh, it's we're, we're working with a you know a mesh. So I need to just kind of guess and kind of line it up. So looking at it from the left here, I'm going to try to get this as close as I can. I think 14.5 is pretty good. So you can see here how it is um, going up and touching, almost touching uh, the bottom surface of that mesh. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, make sure the operation is set to join and just apply that. And now we have those four standoffs chilling out there. All right. So right off the bat, obviously what we need to do is to have holes in the bottom here so we can actually insert uh, some pretty long screws. Um, so you can see here um, there's a geometry in place so that a, a, a very long screw can go in there and um, I believe the screws I'm using are about an inch and a half so uh, what is it 1.5 inches to centimeters that's about 3.81 centimeter long so if you're using M whatever screws that's how long the screws will have to be all right but depending on how whatever hardware you have you can you know update the CAD uh, to your hardware um, but for me that's what I'm using I'm using it uh, a pretty long screw. Alright, so the next thing is to kind of punch in those holes. That's kind of easy. We just uh, bring back that sketch and then select those circles that we made. Not the donut shape, but just the circles. And the last one there. And it doesn't matter about it being um, dynamic or whatever. I'm just going to cut through it like that. And that'll create our holes. So now you got our holes there. Cool. This is, how thick is, this is about 1.5 millimeters thick. That's okay. Um, so another thing I'm, I'm noticing is the next thing I want to do is I need to kind of cover this area and close all of this. Because right now, if we were to print this out, uh, the light would actually leak out from the sides. And we need to encompass all that. So we need to kind of create an outer wall. And currently it looks like... Um, Maybe we can do it cleaner without having to create another sketch. So it's a good idea to kind of try to do uh, as many things with as little sketches, depending on what you're working on. But in this case, I'm going to go back into this sketch because that's where the base is and hide that thing there. I'm actually just going to offset this guy and just put 1.5 here. That way we have um, a little bit of distance there. Yeah, so I'm going to go back into this guy and select that new offset that we did there. So now what we have is a little sketch profile that we can use to be our wall. So I'm actually going to make this the same height now, going like that. Was it 14.5, I believe? Just like that. So it's the same height as our standoffs. And we're basically hitting the join operation so that we can join all this together. So hit OK. And I can hide the sketch now. I've only used two sketches so far. And if I bring back the Circuit Playground, make sure none of the standoffs are uh, kind of intersecting with the board. It looks like um, we're going to have a little bit of issues. Take a look at this. You see how the JST is, the, the standoff here is kind of in the middle of the JST. It'd be very, very difficult to plug in our JST connector. So what we actually want to do is kind of reorient this. So I'm going to step back about right here before we did anything I'm gonna select the circuit playground hit M on my keyboard to move it and actually rotate it by 45 degrees that way our standoff will be away from it so I'm gonna hit capture position because this automatically gets shown up whenever you move any components in fusion you need to capture that position so now I have basically a snapshot of where our objects need to be so now if I step forward, I actually don't have to do any rework because of the way we were 
uh, projecting sketches and building on top of other projected surfaces, everything just updated for me. So you can see these standoffs that we made, didn't have to update them, they just updated for me. And that's really why I like using uh, projected sketches and just being parametric as much as possible. Because um, if we ever need to move something, we don't have to do too much reworking. So that's awesome. So now I have plenty of room uh, for my JST connector. And I also have room for a USB cable if we want to um, just power it off a USB. So if we wanted to create a hole for that, we can actually punch out a hole here so that we can insert a USB cable. But in this instance, I really didn't need to do that. The next things I recommend to do is to add some chamfers at the bottom. I'm using some machine screws that have a kind of a tapered uh, screw head. Uh, so adding a chamfer here is actually a good idea. So I think about 1.5 or even 2 millimeters because it's a fairly large screw. So I think 2 millimeters works pretty good. So I got these nice chamfers so the screws will get flush with the bottom of that surface. And that's basically all we need to really do. Um, obviously we could add the, the, the slide switch here. Um, but that's sort of a little extra step here. Um, the way I placed it in was strategic, of course, being away from the board here and kind of mounting it in this orientation, bringing out that hole here, and then uh, making this kind of holder area so that the circuit or so that the the component itself, when you're uh, kind of actuating that little switch, when you push it in, this little uh, this little kind of ledge here, this chamfered edge, will kind of hold that thing in place and then you can insert it at an angle and these side walls just kind of hold it in place really these three side walls so that's how i put that together a, a little bit of a couple steps there in order to do that right but that's pretty much it um if you wanted something super simple you could do just this and print it out and and put it on whatever i think uh this would work really well for something that is not just a lamp but maybe something that is on a prop itself, maybe like a space gun or something, or like shoulder pads, something wearable maybe. So this is just uh, one of many uh, projects that you can do. But I just wanted to share with you guys how quick and easy it was to kind of uh, update this. And what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and, and post this as a remix uh, so that folks can um, download the the model as it is and, and just kind of... Uh, Put it together so you don't have to like rework it or anything so that's pretty much it um if you haven't check out the time lapse tuesday video it's on the adafruit channel on youtube you can check that out and just get an idea of how to put it together it's pretty straightforward i'll have links to all the screws and things necessary to put it together but that's pretty much it i hope you guys found something useful for it if you have any questions or anything let me know in the comments below i'll see you guys next time